Hello, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and today I thought I'd talk a little bit about climate change. Now this has been prompted by the fact that I've just read a book called The Uninhabitable Earth and it's a pretty scary book. And the title's a bit inflammatory and that's probably intentional because it's a scary subject and it's not getting enough attention. Uh, and the book covers the global impact of climate change, not just global in terms of the whole of the earth, but global in terms of all kinds of different impacts uh, in terms of um, you know, diseases, uh, climate, water, uh, political unrest, wars, you know, all this sort of thing. Um, yes, it's a pretty scary book. And you got me thinking really about two things. One is, What's the impact of climate change on the allotment? And that's what's going to be the uh, subject of this video. And then what's the broader impact? You know, what, what, what can I as an individual do about climate change uh, using the allotment as a tool for that? So this is really about mitigating uh, the effects of climate change on the allotment uh, and exploiting them as well, because obviously some of them will be beneficial. So I think, you know, the best way to do this is to go through uh, the different uh, impacts and look at what we can do on the allotment, as I say, to exploit them and mitigate them. So I think I'll start with looking at just the general trend of increasing temperatures. And so that's kind of the most positive uh, impact here in the UK, um, because obviously it means milder winters um, and you know warmer summers. And really, in many ways, that's not a bad thing. Uh, it will mean a few uh, extra pressures in terms of pests and things like that. But generally speaking, you know, a milder winter means we can grow more uh, and it means less messing around with fleece and, and things like that to protect stuff. Um, and, you know, it means we can grow maybe at some point uh, varieties that we couldn't overwinter at the moment. Now I do a lot of stuff already overwintering and it's already pretty successful. So in some ways it's quite exciting about the, the prospect of being able to grow even more uh, stuff over winter. Uh, but really you're still going to need uh, some protection. And so in my case I've got uh, some amazing polytunnel that I'm sitting in at the moment. And I've got lots of low tunnels and lots of coal frames. Uh, and they will you know, definitely allow me to grow even more and even better over winter. And now the biggest issue that I find is obviously over winter is mainly about light levels, but it's also about frequent frosts, freezing and unfreezing, freezing and unfreezing. And that seems to result in quite a lot of the salads, maybe 10, 20% of them uh, rotting at the stem. So if I could eliminate that, that would be the biggest issue. Now it's unclear whether that's a fungal disease and that might get worse in a milder winter or whether it's the freezing and unfreezing uh, that causes that. So it'd be quite interesting to see whether anybody's got any experience of that. Because I do see some of these gardeners in Canada where it's even colder than us and they seem to succeed really well. And maybe that sort of indicates it may be a fungal disease so that might get worse. So the next thing is more variability in the weather, you know, more energy in the weather system. And that just means more storms, more gales um, and, you know, basically more extremes of negative weather. Now, that's where, you know, I'm really well positioned on the allotment. And I think it's a strategy that other people can follow. And there's basically a handful of different techniques. So the first one is using a, uh, a polytunnel provides loads of protection just in its own right. It doesn't protect hugely from the cold, but it does provide a really nice, comfortable environment. You know, there's no, there's only a gentle breeze basically that blows through it. Um, it does reduce the, uh, the variability of t nighttime temperatures to some extent. Uh, it definitely makes it nice and warm. So basically winter becomes spring. Uh, and even summer on some days in the polytunnel. Um, but in order to really grow through winter and exploit those, you know, mitigate those really cold uh, extremes of temperature, you do need to fleece inside the polytunnel. And so if climate change results in more kind of variability, uh, you know, lots of cold nights, for example, lots of warm days, um, you know, that type of thing, then an efficient fleece system in the polytunnel is essential. So something that you can 
put down in 10 seconds and take up in 10 seconds just makes it so much easier if you're visiting the polytunnel you know every day uh, which you'd have to be doing or you'd have to leave it down for long periods of time I like to take it up and down each day uh, which makes uh, an efficient fleecing system really important and I do have a really nice efficient fleecing system in this polytunnel so the next thing is outside so when you're outside um, in the outdoor beds obviously you want them completely uncovered uh, during the summer months uh, well actually the late spring summer and early autumn months and then covered later on and the most efficient way to do that is fleece so you know fleece is really is really great the rain passes through it and all of that sort of thing um, but my experience is that it's very inconvenient to keep on taking fleece on and off all the time and whilst it's great at the kind of just extending autumn into the early winter and it's great at sort of bringing spring just a little bit further forward into winter it does it's not really fantastic over right in the over winter period uh, and obviously we grow a lot well we grow all of our own food all the way through winter so what i found is that cold frames are even better for that and cheap cold frames are fine uh, just a you know, single layer of polythene does uh, does wonders the problem with two layers of polythene which a lot of people use in really cold climates which we don't have is you do tend to get condensation inside and of course light is passing through two level two layers of polythene so the combination of two layers of polythene plus condensation means a quite significant reduction in light levels and since light is so important in winter I think a single layer generally is the best way to go and of course when you've got really bad temperature extremes you can always lay a bit of fleece down on in the cold frame as well if that's actually necessary um, we've, we've hardly ever found that necessary probably one or two nights uh, in the whole of winter and that's not in every winter so cold frames are fantastic for that um, and slightly less because the beauty of cold frames is of course you can just take the tops off and they're flat so you can stack them up and store them very, really easily in summer uh, now in hoop tunnels are really good as well uh, they're efficient if you can just take the tops off them uh, and store the plastic but I don't like doing that it's too f much faffing around for me so I like to just leave the tops on and that means that storage isn't you know it's much more difficult uh, and so I try to just find um, things that I can grow in those hoop tunnels all the way through summer so that's generally peppers and tomatoes uh, and I prop the hoop tunnels right up um, so that there's quite a lot of clearance in them show you pictures of that um, and yeah stuff grows just fine in, in those so what's next so we're likely to also get more pest pressure the milder the winters the more pests are going to overwinter so there's more pest pressure uh, during the spring and the summer and so that's another advantage of the coal frames because you can Repl take off the polythene covers on the coal frames and replace those with a mesh cover and there's lots of things that you can grow with that sort of amount of d clearance so all the salad crops uh, you know grow grow perfectly well uh, and the added advantage is that when you've got a mesh cover on it just reduce the light levels a little bit and that's something that's actually desirable in in summer so all your salads uh, spinaches um, carrots um, provided you don't mind the carrots getting squashed down a little bit doesn't seem to affect uh, the um, the yield at all of the carrots um, but you know that sort of clearance isn't quite enough for carrots but say the tops will just squash down and it's fine um, so so that's good um, and as I say fleece is really good I'm using lots of fleece at the moment so it's March at the moment so it's just really great just to get plants like lettuces for example that have gone out in, in the ground still a bit of hail cold rain things like that uh, and the fleece and you know quite windy and so the fleece just protects them just for probably for about a month uh, until maybe the end of April when the fleece can come off so yeah what have we covered so then summer so summer is going to be a challenge if we're going to see more 
uh, extreme weather, so more gales and things like that, but also more extreme heat and drought. So I guess there's a few things we can do. So we can store more water. Uh, I've done a lot of work on storing water. I'll put a few photos up of that. Uh, uh, so basically capture as much water as you can. Ideally capture that water in, um, in winter because certainly here there's very little water in spring uh, and almost no water in summer so there's not much point capturing water at, this, at that time of year. But anything you can capture in winter that can keep you going through spring uh, that's pretty useful. And of course if we get thunderstorms then it's possible even in summer that we could capture quite a lot of water. And so the guttering systems I've put on are designed to capture really heavy downpours um, and you know those are those are likely to be thunderstorms and they're only likely to last for you know half an hour or an hour or something like that so you need to capture every little drop of water that falls uh, in those heavy uh, heavy thunderstorms. Um, so the next thing is heat so obviously a simple system for shading your polytunnel uh, or greenhouse so in my case I've got a tiny little greenhouse and I just throw um, uh, debris netting over the top of that and that provides a really great shaded environment in summer. In the polytunnel I've got roof bars and I'll put a photograph up of that and I just put uh, mylar sheeting um, you know that's the sort of stuff that you buy for um, uh, blankets to you know if you're hiking or something like that and you get stranded in the cold and you need to wrap yourself up in a mylar blanket so they're, they're really good they're incredibly cheap like a pound each uh, and they reflect quite a substantial amount of the sunlight and by putting them just down the center of the polytunnel what you're reflecting out of the of the polytunnel is the heat from the midday sun and then you don't have anything on the sides of the polytunnel so you get uh, you know evening sun and morning sun gets in but just the midday sun just gets filtered out a bit so that's worked really well for me. Um, on the main garden beds I've got quite a few uh, mesh tunnels uh, and as I say they're great for the spinaches and the salad leaves and, and all of that sort of thing. Um, if you're germinating seeds and the dr ground keeps drying out and as a result of that you don't get very good germination and that's particularly an issue with things like carrots which you're probably planting in May and June when it's really hot, uh, then just put in some um, fabric of some sort and hessian cloth or something like that or you know any kind of tight woven cloth uh, on the ground that you can water through but it just reduces the evaporation rate no end and it really helps those carrot seeds uh, to germinate so that's really useful when it's really hot. Uh, and as I say the coal frame tops you can just have an alternative set of cold frame tops that have got mesh on them uh, and you can have that mesh whatever size you want of course if you want it as a, a dense mesh something like um, EnviroMesh or uh, uh, debris netting then that's great for uh, reducing the light levels a little bit as well as keeping the pests off um, and you could even use fleece uh, but obviously that's not going to last uh, very long, not, not more than one or two seasons. Um, and so I, I tend to use debris netting myself. I, it's so cheap uh, and so easy uh, to deploy um, and it does keep you know, the majority of pests off. It won't keep green fly off and white fly, uh, not very reliably, but yeah, most of the stuff uh, it'll keep off. So. I think that's about it. Uh, I mean, it's a struggle to uh, remember everything off the top of my head, but um, you know. The, so the bottom line is, I think that there's lots we can do um, to reduce the severity of climate change. It just requires uh, some protection. So you know, re really, the the combination of fleece, coal frames, low tunnels, and high tunnels, polytunnels, and greenhouses will you know really make it extremely cost effective um, to take advantage of the best of climate change in the garden but also mitigate some of the issues so i'm pretty bullish about the opportunities um, to mitigate climate change just from a gardening perspective and of course if you can do that that means you can grow a huge amount of food 
and if you can grow a huge amount of food that means you can do lots of positive things to reduce your own personal carbon footprint and that's going to be the subject of another video so anyway i hope this was useful and uh, let me know in the comments and what are you doing and are you thinking about it and do you see any opportunities or risks that i haven't covered um yeah i'd love to hear from you and i'll see you soon Bye.